shopping? You're tired of Christmas shopping? It's easy to get grinchy in this season, isn't it? Parking space is hard to find, that sort of thing. All the travel, people are just wonderful driving around, don't they? I saw someone pull in front of, uh, they pulled out, beeped at the other person, almost rammed them from behind, then drove around them, almost causing their own accident, and then almost smashed in front of the car. So they were like, just like 15 traffic violations, all because the person had pulled in front of them about 100 foot advance notice, which is pretty reasonable. Our nerves kind of get frayed, but for those of us with a faith, we can come and find some peace. We can find some hope. And today we're praying as we find some joy. How many of you need a little joy in your life? Okay, about half of you. The rest of you, there's a story called The Grinch That Found Christmas. <laughs> and you need more joy than you know of. So we're going to find some joy as it all happened in the country. Amen? Amen. I am so tickled. I'm going panic attacks because I don't have a sermon. Uh, our sermon today comes from a wonderful story about some folks that find the meaning of Christmas in the country. So, we have a couple of announcements this morning. We have one from Miss Chris. change the date. It is listed in here for January 24th and 25th. We are now moving it to February 6th and 7th. So if you want to put that on your calendar, we will change that date to February. Thank you. There are cards galore out in the, in the fellowship hall. I'm asking everyone, if you are leaving right after church, please stop in and get them. But if you are staying after church, give the youth about 10, 15 minutes to get everybody's cards in order. Everybody has cards, trust me. Everybody sitting in this congregation has a card out there. So if you're going to leave right after church, make sure you check with us uh, before you leave. All right? Thank you. Amen. Also, have an announcement this morning. Uh, we're thankful for the youth doing that work. If you do have Christmas cards, please uh, consider uh, having them do that. We've got one week left of the youth Christmas card delivery service. Yes? One week left. So they don't do midweek. So uh, that's your post office. But God bless them. Consider making a donation. I want an announcement for the uh, uh, education committee. Uh, Miss Louise wasn't able to be here with us today. She got a little bit of the flu, so we want to keep her in our prayers. Amen. But what a wonderful time for the parents' day out yesterday, Santa's Secret Workshop. We've called it a couple of different names, but what a wonderful time. It was a joy to be there. We had a couple of families that we hadn't met before. Uh, one of those families, it was great to hear. I think that's a success story. When the kids were leaving, they turned to mom and said, Mom, Mom, can we come back to this place? This was just so much fun, and we learned all about Jesus. Not that this place was fun. This place was fun. We had a great time, and we learned all about Jesus. Mom said, well, we're kind of busy tomorrow. And they said, well, we could come back some other time. Louise and I looked at each other. <laughs> then back to the kids. Thank you for coming today. <laughs> we had about three families that we connected with. Praise be to God. Thank you for all of the help and uh, for the many hands that put that together. There were many. And thank, I want to give my thanks to Louise. She's not here, but her dear hubby is, and he can pass along. She did a lot of work putting that together and planning from last year's to this year's event. So many thanks to the Education Committee. Other announcements this morning. Oh, great grandson is here in the in the uh, Santa Claus suit in the back. Oh my goodness.
one chunky monkey, madam. <laughs> Praise be to God. Last announcement I had, we had a, a letter that went out along with your Christmas cards today, and I'm thankful for the youth helping me. It was a letter from the Finance Committee thanking everyone in the church for your faithful support. It's also one that goes out thanking our committees for all the many contributions our committees make for their attendance and their time. And it also goes out to invite people back home. It talks about some of the neat things that we're doing, some of the new programs, the new ministries, the new events, that it's an exciting time of rebirth here at the chapel. And we also are sending this not just to the people who are here, but to the people that we haven't seen in a while. That's okay, isn't it? When we like to see some of those folks, we've all had those, hey, I haven't seen so-and-so in a while. Wouldn't you love a chance to invite them back home? Well, I prepared the mailing for this, and for everyone that normally attends, we had a stack of envelopes about this big. And for all the other folks that we know, <laughs> These are all the folks we have regular contact with that have been here, that are part of our family as far as we know. Some of them live in other states, but we stay connected to them and their family. Amen? We need to invite them back home. This is the thing this year I want you to pray about. These folks, a lot of them, are waiting for the chance to come back home. Maybe they found another church and we can bless them in that. Maybe they're just waiting for someone to connect with them, to welcome them home. Have any of you ever been welcomed home and not known whether you were invited? <laughs> you need to pray about these. <coughs> Will you share a quick prayer with me? It'll be fast, I promise. We call them trench prayers in the ministry. God, watch over these letters as they go out to the members in our congregation may not have seen in a little while. There may be people who have been, and we just, we want to make sure that they reach them and that they feel invited to come home. There's a spirit of wellness at the chapel, a family of faith that's strong. And we want to welcome them to this wonderful season as our King comes to us again and beyond into a brand new year. Bless us. Bless those that we need to connect with again, and new families as well. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, I need someone, a uh, couple someones as we're having our time after church, if I can connect with somebody and pick their brain about some of these uh, addresses. Amen? So if I come, please uh, search me out. If you know who you are, that would be good to help me. Because I need help. <coughs> In a lot of ways. I'm going to be the main, uh, I think I was designated as a dance choreographer, so if you see me going crazy in the front of you, it's, it's not my medication, amen? <laughs> uh, I don't think we have any other announcements with that, do we? God bless you. So let's open our season of joy on our Sunday, our third Sunday of Advent with a choral intro. Oh, come, let us adore him.
waiting for the morning light of a Christmas morning. In faith, we now hold the same anticipation, the same excitement, the same joy. But now we focus in Jesus. We give thanks for the coming of our King. It is His advent, His arriving, that brings us joy. God brings us hope. And out of hope comes peace. Lord Jesus, I am the Lord. You are the joy of our lives. You are our Christmas morning. Remind us of the amazing power of your happy spirit and the joy that comes by our acceptance of your love. Amen. We found joy. together for an opening hymn, Joy to the World, number 270. to her firstborn, a son. 
She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. Faithfully taken Carl 
to every Tussmall football game for the last five years, and his name is Steve Wagner. And it is so nice to have people in this world that look out for the less fortunate. And Carl enjoys his evenings every Friday night during football season with Steve. And I want to thank him and praise him and have God's blessing on him. And also, I have a young mother, Heather, who is waiting for a second kidney. We, uh, she needs another kidney. Her, her one kidney is failing. And her name is Heather. Our thanks for Mr. Wagner, and also keep Heather in your prayers. Who's <coughs> prayers this morning? As the microphone's going, I have a prayer. I don't need a microphone, please. But Steve Wagner is this little Santa Claus's grandfather. So he does the football games every Friday night, no matter what. Amen. Uh, yes, I just want to um, praise my my church family for all the prayers they've gave, given me this year and our hardship. And I want to praise God because on Wednesday I had a kidney stone, went to the hospital, and I prayed to God to help me with the pain. And within an hour and a half, I passed the stone, and I was okay. That is a miracle, and for those of us who have had kidney stones, an hour and a half. The parting of the Red Sea was... Praise yeah, be to God, that's... The worst thing of kidney stones is, and not to be too uh, morose here, but when you're done with a kidney stone, you've passed one, it's this little, little, tiny, teeny thing. You're sure it's like driveway gravel or like a lump of coal. It's just tiny, smaller than a half grain of rice. And it really preaches about the parable of the mustard seed. Let me tell you, like, that's it? That's what made me pass out. Okay. God bless you. Thank you for sharing this. Praise be to God. Prayers this morning. I have a prayer here. Pray for Ryder grandson of Rose and Les Camp. He's in the hospital. So we want to keep, keep Ryder in our prayers. Rose and Les's grandson. Let me know if there's any pastoral care or anything I could do. We'll certainly keep Ryder in our prayers. Pray for those who don't enjoy the Christ in Christmas. There are a lot of folks who celebrate the Christmas holiday, but don't know a lot about the Christmas story. We're the folks who understand that, so we pray for God can work through us to help to deliver the message. We're the shepherds. Like our story is going to be about this morning, people end up having accidents and end up in strange places. And they get to meet some strange people who seem very happy. They don't have fear. They have joy. They have hope. They have peace in their life. And they have love. So, amen. Other prayers looking for the congregation. last prayer I had here was, please pray for those who are lonely. Give someone a hug. Some of them we, I was talking about doing, but I thought it would be too soon for this year, but I definitely will look into it for next year. I've hosted it before called a Blue Christmas. Uh, it's a worship celebration, usually done in the evening, and it's not somber, it's not dark, but it's a time, this Christmas holiday can be a very a hard time to work through. For those of us who have experienced loss, Christmas can be, and Thanksgiving can be a very blue Christmas. Recognizing that, remembering those folks that this is not a bright and cheery holiday, keep those folks in your prayers. There's divorces that happen a lot more than any other time of the year right now. A lot of breakups, a lot of deaths. People hurt during this holiday. Keep them in your prayers. And pray that God can work through you to help bring some light and hope into their lives. Think of them during your celebration as well. If you know someone who's alone for the holiday, think about inviting them over for your shindig. Welcome into your family. I promise it won't hurt. Can we pray together? Heavenly and gracious God, we give you thanks today for all that you're working inside of us. Be in these prayers, 
receive these offerings that we have, our thanksgiving to you. And what do you ask for in your offering? You ask for our prayers, our weaknesses, our trials, our temptations, and our troubles. Along with that, Lord, we surrender our praises. We give you our blessings. We give our thanksgivings. We offer up the very best that we have and the very worst that we have. We share our very lives and our souls with you, and so now we ask you to take these in your most precious name and in the spirit of joy. We pray in the name of the one who brings us peace. We remember the Lord's Prayer, and we pray just as he taught us how to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven,
in the hands that have brought it today. Bless our hearts and bless this family of faith. Not just here, but everywhere. For all the lives that you touch and for every life that you're trying to touch. Now through this season and for all time. Bless this house for the building of your kingdom. With human lives and human souls. One brick at a time. One life at a time. In the name of Jesus.
new story. This year's our country story. Well, uh, actually it's about some city kids. Who found ourselves in the country on Christmas Eve. Yeah, they were two kids who just because they were from the city thought they knew everything. You know how them city slippers are. But that Christmas Eve, they heard something they had never heard before. It was a story. <coughs> so, this really is a story in a story. And it all happened in the country.
they be hanging out with my friends at the arcade? Going to the mall? Don't you all have a get together with your friends and family on Christmas Eve? Not really. Usually we go to some boring office party with my parents. So you don't gather around and read the Christmas story? The Christmas story? Like it was the night before Christmas? No, no, no. The one from the Bible. And it came to pass in them their days. There went out a deep grief from Caesar August. I never heard of that Christmas story. <laughs>
we like it. So now what? Well, how about if you render us a tune? Yeah. Render? Uh, you mean sing a song? Yeah. I don't know. Our music wasn't translated out here. You wouldn't understand it. Well, what kind of songs do you like to sing, cousin? Yeah, aren't they like the songs we sang? <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> They're <laughs> different. Yeah, like how? Well, okay. Our Christmas songs are cool. <laughs> <laughs>
well. Uh, Anyone want to know what happened next? Well, it was like this.
about it or something. The more they heard, the more they wanted to know. Yup, and they didn't never try to hog Jaws at Granny's table, but over a peanut butter sandwich and a glass of milk, them city kids got an air full of the gospel.
story goes, their parents did let them stay to decorate the tree and to hear the Christmas story again. In fact, their pa and mom seemed to enjoy themselves too. Their dad forgot about the office party he was missing. And their mom forgot about him. That night, they all gathered round and Uncle Yule prayed, thanking God for bringing them all together. And then city seekers heard the real Christmas story for the first time. You know, it's hard to believe that there are people out there who don't know the Christmas story. So, let's tell it again. I was born right there one whole night. It all happened in 
wonder if, I, I think Luther was just, <laughs> we were to give out awards, wow. <laughs> Having been a pastor at a lot of different churches, some churches you go to, Christmas plays turn out to be like, you know, the Christmas Nazi shows up and you have to do it. And the kids live in fear and it gets to be done this way and this way. And it's got to, these people were laughing, sometimes not getting their lines because they were laughing so hard. <laughs> Mike's here last night when they did the joke, uh, the other, and he comes up, ho, 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 like medicated kind of thing. <laughs> to get their lines in. That's what it's about, isn't it? There's folks on the outside who don't know what it's like to have a family in there. To get together and to, to do things with a church, it's just different. I mean, we go out and we help things. We clean the side of a road for, with another group of people. We do good things. When you do them in a church family, I, I don't know, it's just different. It, it sticks to your soul. It's being part of something bigger. Getting help from a bigger source. And that's why we call it a family. I give thanks for all of you shared in this play. It's, it's what it's all about. Sharing the story with other people. Not just about Jesus, but about what Jesus has to do with you. Let's pray together. Mighty God, we give you thanks for this country's story. We need to hear it again. We need to remember that it didn't happen in some far distant place. It's happening right now. Our king is arriving. That's what that word advent means, arriving. And our king is arriving once more. For those of us of the faith, it is with a flash and a bang. And we can see the star. We can feel the exhilarance of that night, the, the crispness of the air. We can hear the chorus of angels. Help us to tell the story in our own way. We don't need special words. Help us to tell the story. And share Jesus' life with others. Help us. Help us find the joy once more. And all the people of God who have joy in their hearts said, Amen. I'm hearing you, but I'm not feeling you. I'm sorry. All the people of God who have joy in their hearts said, Amen. Well, that's good, y'all. <laughs> Can we give our thanks for all of the people who put together uh, all of our Closing music, angels from the realms of glory, God be with you. Amen. Amen.